All right, guys. So uh, welcome to your PowerPoint 2019 practice exam. And, uh, you know, my goal here is to <clears throat> create a little project um, that we can go through that will prep you for your test. All right. And uh, um, I basically take these questions from um, a source called Mike's Office. Mike's Office is on YouTube. Um, I take them from Gmetrics. And um, I take the tests a lot myself, and I try to design questions around what I um, kind of remember from the test. Uh, these are not word for word the test questions that you're going to see, but the skills are the same. All right. So um, if you do well on this review, you're definitely going to pass your PowerPoint test. All right. So you're going to start out. Here's all the files I sent you. You're going to start out right here and open this up. This is called PowerPoint 2019 Practice Questions. And it's just going to open up right here. And uh, it's going to give you all the questions that we're going to go through today. And I think you got 59 of them if you scroll through this whole document, which I'm not going to do. Um, and we're going to start out by opening up first class project. I know that because, you know, the heading here says to use the following questions with the first class PowerPoint presentation. All right. So hopefully there's no errors in this. This is the first time I've gone through this. So go ahead and click on first class project and um, make, make sure you download a copy. All right. Um, so file tab. Download as download a copy and just kind of put it somewhere as you're working on these um, questions you know when you close out your PowerPoint when we're done with this and we switch to a new one you're definitely gonna want to just kind of uh, not save anything alright so no matter what just don't save anything when you're done let's see All right. Uh, and also, let's take this little opportunity so that I can talk about the new version of um, Office. If you have not downloaded it yet, you need to. There is a handful of skills here that you're just not going to be able to do if you don't have the most current version of Office. All right. And your test does use the 2019 uh, version of Office. Um, now, tomorrow when we test, you're not actually going to need to worry about that because the software is virtual. Even if you don't have 2019 installed on your computer, when you get into your testing session, it will be the 2019 version. It doesn't look any different, really. This is 2019 that I'm working in right now, all right? And I'll show you, as we go through this, you're going to see there's about a handful of new things in the 2019 version. Other than that, it's pretty much the same test that you took from 2016. All right, so let's go through this. We're going to start with number one. Number one says, create a slide layout called Trevor's Layout. I know in the question here there's no spaces, but there's supposed to be a space there. Trevor's layout with a picture placeholder on the left and a text placeholder on the right. So we're going to go to the View tab, and we're going to open up what's called Slide Masters. All right, how Slide Masters works is basically on your navigation pane on the left, you no longer have the three slides that we were working with on our presentation. You have what's called Slide Layouts. All right, so whatever you do to these uh, layouts will affect every slide in that presentation that has that layout. So if I were to click right here and add a picture, it's going to add a picture to every slide in my presentation that's called a title slide. This large slide at the very top is called your slide master. Whatever you do here affects every slide in your presentation, whether it's a title slide or a title and content slide or whatever type of slide. This one wants us to actually create a new layout. So we're going to go up here and say insert layout. Uh, we're going to right click on that layout and we're going to say rename layout and we're going to call it Trevor's layout. And again, um, this is not capitalized in the question, so don't capitalize it. If it is on your test, capitalize it. Whatever it says uh, in the question, that's how you want it to look when you type it. So we're going to rename this. We're going to go to insert placeholder and we're going to insert a picture placeholder on the left. So click and drag a picture placeholder anywhere here on the left. The size and position do not matter. Go back to the slide masters tab and then we're going to say insert placeholder and we're going to say a text placeholder on the right hand side. Just like that. We've already renamed the layout so all we really have to do now is come over here to the slide master tab and say close master views. All right. Um, what that did for me was it has now created a layout here called Trevor's layout. All right. That was not there before. All right. So I can just kind of use that layout and apply it to any slide that I want to. All right. We're not done with slide masters. It says now number two, 
says on the title and content layout of the slide master, change the first level bullet to use a checkbox image. All right. So we're going to go back to the view tab. We're going to go back to slide masters. And this time we're going to hover over these things. We're not going to go to the slide master here. We're going to hover over these tiles until we find the title and content slide master, which is right here. It wants us to use a checkbox. Um, so if you haven't downloaded this yet, I think I downloaded it. I hope I did. If not, I'll pause this and download it. But you're going to see here in the files that I sent you, there's a little image called a checkbox that we're going to use for this question. So download it if you haven't done it yet. And what I would do also is just kind of pause me if you haven't already. Select all these things like this and just go ahead and download them into a little folder on your desktop. All right. It will make your life a little easier as we go through this. All right. So we're going to go uh, back to slide masters here under the view tab. And we're going to go ahead and select this first level bullet. All right. And when it talks about levels of a bullet, basically the first level is the bullet that's all the way to the left. All right. A second level will be indented. A third level will be indented more. And usually they look a little different too. So we're going to select this. We're going to go to the home tab and we're going to go over here to the drop down group in bullets and we're going to go to bullets and numbering. All right. I'm going to go ahead and look for my picture and I'm going to say browse from file. It's in my downloads folder, so I hope I can get to it. Checkbox right there. And we're going to say insert. All right. And now you can see here that I have a checkbox uh, for the first level bullet. All right. That's all we have to do there. So again, with slide masters, the number one thing you got to do is make sure that you close them out when you're done. All right done. <clears throat> Number three, this is one of those questions that carries over to just about every Microsoft product. If it says remove uh, hidden properties and personal information, what it's talking about is going to the file tab and saying check for issues. And you're going to say inspect document. You're just going to say yes here to whatever this says. Never uncheck anything with the pop-up window here. In fact, go through it and make sure everything is checked. So I'm going to go ahead and check link and off slide content. And I'm going to say inspect. I want to inspect for everything. All right. And then I just want to remove properties and personal information, which is right here. Document properties and personal. So I'm going to say remove all. And then I'm just going to hit close. All right. That's it. That's number three. <coughs> Excuse me. On slide two. All right. Apply the inside top left shadow effect to all three images. Set the shadow distance to three points. So we're going to um, select one of the pictures, hold control on your keyboard, and then go ahead and select the other pictures so that all three of them are selected at the same time. You can do this separately if you want, uh, but it's going to take up more your time. Um, up at the very top, when you click on a picture or a table or anything, you're going to get a um, contextual tab up here and this is called a picture tools format tab okay it's only there when you click on pictures if i click off of the picture there you'll see it goes away all right but if i click back on a picture i automatically get that um contextual tab all right so i'm going to select all three pictures i'm going to go to uh, picture tools format i'm going to go to picture effects and i'm going to go down to shadow this is called i forgot um top left shadow effect so it's diagonal um, inside top left right there inside top left that's it right there inside top left shadow effect to all three images boom set the shadow distance to three points all right so we're going to go back in here go back into shadow and go to shadow options and then shadow distance we're going to drop that to three points. All right. And then we can close this out over here. Done. Number four is done. Arrange all the images on slide two so that the middles of the pictures are aligned. All right. So again, if you haven't selected all three pictures with your control key, go ahead and do that. Um, under the picture tools format tab, you're going to see align and you're going to see align middle. All right. So go ahead and click that. Boom. Done. Number six says reorder the animations of the images on slide two so that they fade in one by one from left to right. All right. 
So they might already be like that, but let's go ahead and check. Let's open up our animation pane and see right now it looks like they're already in order. No, they're not. Here, let's preview it. Oh, 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 it's a hot mess. Okay, so with our animation pane open, it's literally as simple as um, clicking on uh, the first image here, which is picture five, I guess, and go ahead and uh, scoot it above picture eight. So now that's the first animation, all right? This little basket needs to be the third animation, which means this is the second one. So go ahead and play it now. From left to right, they should come in. Boom, okay? And animation pane is just a real quick way to kind of um, reorder your animations. And that's it. We can close this one out. That's that whole question right there. All right, all right. On slide three, change the color of the book's icon to red with a blue outline. Okay, so this is one of those things. If you don't have 2019, you're not going to see this. It looks just like a picture, but it's not. Click on the books on slide three, and you're going to get this new thing up here uh, that is not in 2016 called Graphic Tools. And under the Graphic Tools Format tab, you're going to see Graphics Fill, Graphics Outline, Graphic Effects, just like a picture, really, and all, and, you know, Graphic Styles. It really is just like a picture, except they call it a graphic. So we're going to say Graphic Fill. We're going to say Red down here. And then we're going to go to Graphics Outline, and we're going to say Blue. Not light blue, just blue. All right? Done. Animate the books so that they fly in from the left. All right? So we're going to go to the Animations tab. We're going to say Fly In. And under Effect Options, we're going to say From Left. All right? Save the presentation to the Documents folder as a PDF named Basket Weaving. All right, so file, save as, we're going to say browse, it says go to the documents folder, sure, I'm just going to put it, I'm just going to put it in my H drive, yeah, I'm just going to put it in my H drive, uh, PDF file named basket weaving, so we're going to say PDF, we're going to say basket weaving, is it two words? It looks like one word. Yeah, and it's capitalized in one and not in the other. So pick one. I'm going to capitalize it. I'm going to use the one just like it is in the question. Basket weaving, all one word, PDF. When you save this thing, give it a minute, and it's going to pop open a PDF and just close it out. Boom. Not yet. Come on. Still going. Wow, so how are things? Mm. I just had my computer re-imaged too, seriously. All right, and then close it out. Hopefully yours didn't take three years like mine did. All right, um, and this is number 10. This is the last question that we're gonna use this presentation with. All right, configure the presentation to only print course introduction section, all right? So notice here that we have a section called Course Introduction. Click it, and it's going to automatically select the two slides below it. You're going to go to the File tab, and then you're going to go to Print, and you're going to say Print Selection. Boom, just like that. And that's it, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, so hit the over, hit the arrow to the right. And um, I think that's a good place to kind of stop this part of the video. I'm going to go ahead and um, make this part one. And then uh, when we come back and we do part two, we're going to go to the dinosaurs project. All right. Sounds like a plan. Good.